Good evening. Thanks for joining us. We are on Exodus chapter 33 as our Old Testament studies continue on here. It's about a chapter a week. If you need to catch up, they're all archived back behind us. Or you can go back through the scroll back through and find them on Facebook. I think they're also all on YouTube. Chapter 23, Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Time to move on. Depart and go up hence. Thou and the people which you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying unto their descendants, unto thy seed will I give it. So now it's their descendants. All these years later, Moses and all these people are the about 400 years down the line from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So verse 1, God says, you're going to go. Now, we're going to move. You're going to go to some place. And I will send my angel before thee, verse 2, and I'll drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. I'm going to send you, uh, verse 3 says, to a land flowing with milk and honey. But uh, we've got to drive the wicked out of the land first. You've got a job to do, and there's going to be no place found for them wicked people. And uh, it's just like the New Testament, at the end of, at the end of this life, there will be no place found for the wicked. Well, who's the wicked? That's just them murderers right now. It's, uh, God considers the wicked all the people who are not Christians, all the people who do not uh, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ to cleanse them from their sins. So I'm going to take you to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people. You're a rebellious bunch, lest I consume thee in the way. And when the people heard these evil tidings, they mourned. When they heard what God said about them, they, they decided we better repent. So they mourned, and no man did put on him his ornaments. See, all that jewelry and stuff is stuff they carried away when they plundered the Egyptians. And by wearing it, they were identifying with those pagan gods. Remember, they were, what was it, last chapter? Yeah, they were dancing naked around the golden calf. So now they decided, we better take this stuff off. <laughs> For the Lord said to Moses, Say to the children of Israel, You're a stiff-necked people, and I'll come in the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. Therefore now put off those ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do unto thee. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments, all their jewelry, all that gold and stuff by, over by Mount Horeb. They took a bunch of it off to make a golden calf before, remember that? So Moses took the tabernacle, that we've read all these chapters about the plans for, and now they're building, and they're going, they're going to erect it. They pitched it without or outside the camp, far off from the camp. And they called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of the congregation, which was outside the camp. Now, here's a principle that carries right into the New Testament too. Uh, don't try to tell me that you're seeking the Lord or you're seeking the Lord's will in your life if you're not in church and you're not in his word. Everyone who sought the Lord, they went out to the tabernacle because that's where the Lord was going to meet with them in a special way. And it came to pass when Moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and they looked after Moses till he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle the cloudy pillar descended, the Shekinah glory of God. God's in the cloud now. And he stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people, this is the visible presence of God. See that Shekinah glory? But uh, Moses was not able to see God himself. He could see the one, he could see the cloudy pillar, and God's in there speaking to him, just like God was in the burning bush. But Moses wants to see God himself. Like Philip in the New Testament, John 14 said to Jesus, Show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Well, hold that thought. Verse 10. All the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose up and worshipped, every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaks to his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. So we see once again that wherever Moses goes, usually he's got Joshua with him. He's younger than him, and Moses is mentoring him. Joshua will take over after Moses one of these days. But it says Moses was talking to God face to face here, 
But remember, God's shrouded in that cloudy pillar because even in this very chapter, it's going to say nobody can see God and live. Or if you want to go to the New Testament, uh, Jesus told Philip when he said, show us the Father. And Jesus said, uh, Philip, have I been so long with you and you've not known me? Uh, John chapter 1. Nobody has seen God at any time. All through the Old Testament, we see people see God. Well, they either saw him shrouded in a cloudy mist or they saw the pre-incarnate Christ stepping back into time there, the God the Son. Because in that same John chapter 1 where it says nobody's ever seen God, he's invisible, but nobody's ever seen God. But it said, but the only begotten Son, he's declared him or revealed him to us. The only God that we'll ever see when we get to heaven, I believe, is Jesus sitting on the throne because he shrouded his glory in human skin down here and he's in his glorified form up there. God's invisible, but we'll see Christ as God. So here's Moses. Talk about uh, Joshua's following him around. He's in the presence of God, speaking with him face to face. Verse 12, and Moses said to the Lord, they're carrying on conversation together, ain't the Lord and Moses. So Moses says to the Lord, See thou sayest unto me to bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Moses is glad he found grace, but he said, You told me that, Lord. I hope you've found grace too, because that's the only chance we've got. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee. And that's a, a good clue that somebody's found grace. You want to know God more. Show me your way, Lord, that I want to know you, that I may find grace in your sight. And consider, Lord, that this nation is thy people. The Jewish nation was his people. Now, in the fullness of time, all Christians are God's people. And uh, you've got to keep that in mind. This, uh, whatever problems the, you may think the church has, that's God's people. <laughs> that's just... They weren't perfect in the Old Testament. They aren't perfect in the New, are they? They're just forgiven. But that's, that's God's people, the church. And Moses said further to God, verse 14, my, You said, God, but your presence will go with thee, and that I will give thee rest. So Moses said, if, if we're your people, then we want your presence to go with us and give us rest or peace. And he said unto him, Moses says, If your presence go not with me, then we're not going. Carry us not up. I don't want to go, God, if you're not going with me. That's a good good motto still. Whatever plans you've got in life, it's just still God says, now, God, if you're not going with me in this, I don't want to go, even if it is supposedly a land blown with milk and honey. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? We've got to go into them Jebusites, Hittites, Hivites, and all these people said, uh, how will we even know that we found grace in your sight, and how will they know that we found that we're God's people if you don't go with us? And that's so today too, Christian. Wherever you go, it should be that people realize that you've brought the Lord with you wherever you go. So shall we be separated. We're not going to be like them world people out there. We're going to be different, which is holiness. I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth, verse 17, and the Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. Okay, I'll do it, Moses. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And Moses in verse 18, talking back, the Lord says, I beseech thee, or I beg you, Lord, show me your glory. I want to see your glory. I want to see you in your fullness, Lord. And he said uh, God said to Moses, now 19, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. God is good all the time. All the time, God's good. Now God says, I'm going to show you all my goodness at once passing before you. We couldn't handle that, see? But I'll make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and I'll be gracious. This is sovereignty here. This is our sovereign Lord speaking. He said, I'll be gracious to whom I'll be gracious, and I'll show mercy to whom I shall show mercy. That's quoted in Romans too. And he said, verse 20, God says to Moses, you can't see my face. <laughs> For thou shalt no man see me and live. 
Now, does God have a face? Well, you say yes. The only face God's got is the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's like I've said before, whatever the Holy Spirit does or whatever people say the Holy Spirit does, remember the Holy Spirit always wears the face of Christ and he'd never do anything to embarrass Jesus. Uh, that's an anthropomorphism that's uh, assigning human attributes to God, like the, right, the strong right heart arm of God. Like, does the invisible God who is a spirit have an arm? Well, it's, it's, a, it's helping us understand it as human beings. Don't try to make him into a, somebody like us. Don't create God in our image. We're created in the image of God by the fact that we have an eternal spirit that's going to last forever. So God says to Moses, you can't see my face. You can't see the all oh, my goodness. Because no man can see me and live. Verse 21. And the Lord said, behold, there's a place over here by me that you will stand upon the rock. And it'll come to pass while my glory passes by that I'll put thee in the cliff of the rock. That, that busted spot of the, that crack in the rock there, Moses, I'm going to put you down in there. And I'm going to pass over. But you can't see me in my fullness because no man could look upon me like that and live. It's like matter and antimatter. God's so holy. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shield you down in that crack in the rock, put my hand, anthropomorphism again, over you while I come by and let you see my hinder parts. Getting ahead a little bit here. But uh, I'll cover you with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand and you'll see my back parts. Now, that literally ain't God saying, I'm going to let you see my butt when I go by. It's saying... God's going to say, I'm going to let you see my afterglow as I pass by. It's kind of like the sun so bright you can't hardly stand to look at the sun. But don't we love to look at the afterglow, which we call the sunset? And that's kind of what God's going to show Moses here. I'm going to pass over and when I'm by, you can see the afterglow of my glory. But nobody can look on me face to face and live and uh, that keeps us in line with the New Testament. See, the Bible always agrees. No man hath seen God at any time, but the only begotten Son, Jesus, he's revealed him to us. See you next time. Chapter 34 next week.